The Bible says that in the last days, that many false Christs and false prophets would arise and they would deceive many. Now, I want you to pay close attention to that word many because look at the case here. Salem Baptist Church, okay? Huge mega church in Chicago. They have 15,000 members of that church. Do you think that that, oh, I don't know, classifies as many being deceived? Well, we're going to get into it here and talk about the farewell service for Pastor James Meeks and also the passing of the torch that was done here from him to the next pastor, the next leader. But there was also, I mean, it was all hands on deck. So, some people here attending the uh, farewell service that uh, I think we need to to mention. Um, the list was, uh, well, it wasn't a big surprise to me, to say the least. We'll talk about it here in just a second. First, guys, if you could, if YT lets you, try and hit the like button for me. Very important also, you please share the video, help us get around those algorithms. Hit the bell, subscribe, and wear the glasses because I'm blind. And I remind you guys, help me out here with my goal for the month of January, trying to get five new patrons to sign up and bless our ministry for five bucks a month at patreon.com slash conservative truth. We did not hit that goal for December, so we're really hoping we can make it here in January. We got two new signups so far, looking for three more. More info how you guys can help in the description below. So let's talk about Pastor James Meeks here. He has been the senior pastor for Salem Baptist Church for almost 40 years, about 38 years. He is stepping aside at the age of 66. Now, there was uh, rumors going around that he was going to be stepping down back in 2019, but plans change and he has remained on board since. But they just had the farewell service uh, at their church. They call uh, where they gather for church the House of Hope there for Salem Baptist. And well, there he was, Pastor James Meeks on Sunday, January 8th. And he was up there on the stage and he had with him a, uh, a statue of a, of a torch, glass torch, okay? And this was to symbolize him passing the torch from himself over to Charlie Dates, who is going to be the brand new pastor for Salem Baptist Church. He already pastors another church, that being Progressive Baptist Church. And yes, that name is has a lot of significance to it as well. Yes, I have talked about progressive Christianity and the dangers of this for quite some time. And he's going to be maintaining apparently both congregations now for a period of time. Look, Meeks is somebody who has been involved in politics before, okay, even, you know, uh, into the Senate there locally in Chicago, tried to run for mayor, was unsuccessful. But look, I want to talk about who was here at this service. And some were also, you know, just video greetings from other fellow megachurch pastors. So in attendance for this service were Jesse Jackson. Oh, yes, we know all about Jesse Jackson, right? Good friends with Pastor James Meeks. And then you had special video greetings from the likes of T.D. Jakes and Joel Osteen. Oh, I don't think it's coincidence. You see, you got false preachers like, you know, Osteen and Jakes, who they're they kind of flock together. They're both from Texas. I've talked about them both before. You get TD Jakes, or as I call them, TD Snakes. And I, you know, talked back before how about how this guy had pretty much worshipped Kamala Harris. He's always stood for Democrat politicians. He even had Beto O'Rourke at his church prior to the midterms there in Texas because he was trying to give him a little boost for governor. How'd that work out for you? They're not so well. And you have a uh, good old Joel, Smiley Joel, who a couple years ago even marched with BLM in Texas. That's right. Well, a lot of people don't know about that. Um, yeah, they were on hand. And then even this this one took the cake. Mayor Lori Lightfoot. At a church? Really now? There's also a comparison to another politician who did this. And I'll talk about that in get into more about what Lori Lightfoot had to say here at the service in just a second, guys. First, let me put in another quick plug again for my Patreon here, guys. Remember, help us out here with our goal for the month of January. We're looking for people who can help. You know, if you enjoy these videos, you know, you want to contribute to the ministry. Look, again, it's just five bucks a month. You go to patreon.com slash conservative truth. Remember, we got two new signups for January so far. Looking for three more to hit the goal. 
being that we did not make it for December. But also this, guys, when you sign up to Patreon, you're going to be alerted for all my content. This is so important because if the only way you watch these videos is through the YT alert system, trust me, you're missing a ton of content. They're not going to let you know every time I post new videos. So go to Patreon for that. But also, you can leave me your comments on these videos completely censorship free. You don't got to worry about YT blocking or removing what you guys are saying. We can have a nice free flowing discussion on these topics with no interference, no nonsense, no trolls. You guys can send me direct messages as well. So check it out, patreon.com slash conservative truth. Big thank you to everybody already contributing and those thinking of doing so. Thank you as well. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. So you had Lori Lightfoot, yes, who's probably a mayor that has been, you know, probably one of the most hostile towards Christians during her reign there in Chicago. And yes, what a lovely job she's done there. Here on hand to bid farewell to Pastor James Meeks, but she wanted to encourage the congregation, do not fret, fear not, Lori Lightfoot said. And she, she had a Bible. That's right. She had a Bible on hand and she joked with the pastor. She told the congregation, oh, did, did, did you guys think that I wasn't going to come up here and, and, and say farewell to Pastor Meeks and get in front of all of you if I didn't know my Bible? I know my Bible. Lori Lightfoot said, oh, I can tell you this, ladies and gentlemen, she does not know her Bible. This is another snake in the pulpit. But she encouraged everybody to read along with her from the book of Deuteronomy where it talks about the change in leadership from Moses over to Joshua. She was, you know, comparing this between Meeks and Dates, the passing of the torch deal here. And here's the politician I compare this to because and it's such a deception and so many, so many few can see this. Remember, you had New York Governor Kathy Hochul, who appeared at several churches throughout the state when she was advertising the pinchy. You remember she was calling uh, congregations her apostles and was encouraging everybody to spread the news about the pinchy and get people to take it. Of course, she would only pop up in Democrat churches because if she actually showed up to a Bible-believing church that refused to compromise on the Word of God, well, I don't think that she would have been received very well. Now, they would have offered her to receive Christ, but she probably wouldn't have accepted. At least, not the Christ that you and I serve, the true Messiah, the one who is not afraid to call out sin for what it is. And here you have Lori Lightfoot, another who is by no means a Christian, by no means knows the Word of God, yet she parades around as if she does. And again, 15,000 people, and even more that watch online, that believe these liars, these deceivers. Yeah, I'll continue to call them out. We have to. We are in unprecedented times right now. We are getting close to the return of the Lord. And let me mention something about transition of power, because let me go back to the New York thing. You know, I talked about it before when oftentimes when you see a change of leadership, whether it's in a church here, like with Meeks and with dates. It's not always a better transition. Now, as woke as Meeks was, I would be willing to bet that his successor, Charlie Dates, will be even worse than him. And let's also look at the New York situation. When you had Governor Andrew Cuomo and everybody, you know, every, all the stuff that came out about him and all the, you know, horrible things he did, was the replacement going to be any better? Look at Kathy Hochul. I would argue she's worse. So why is it all happening? Where's the righteous leaders? Seem to be kind of hard to find them these days, right? We're in the last days. Christ is coming soon. So many of these mega church, these mega churches, their congregants, their pastors are all going to be left behind. You're going to be wondering what happened. The days are getting short. Let me, and I'm going to put more information on this in the description, and I, and I welcome all of your thoughts on this, but let me do this right now. I want to end this video on hope. Something I do on all my videos. You know, maybe you're stumbling across my channel for the first time, or you watch me for a while, but you're someone that has not yet accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I want to lead you in a prayer to do that right now. Okay? People like, let me say this to you. I, I can't get off of this, I guess, but Lori Lightfoot, who stands for some of the most atrocious 
ideas, principles that you can find. Completely counter, by the way, to God's word, which she claims that she knows so well. Yet if you confront her with actual scripture, when it relates to many of these topics that I'll, I won't name because of various reasons, but she would argue against you on that and claim that's not what scripture says. Please do not be deceived by these people. I, I really need to hammer that point home here. Please do not be deceived by these people. So what I want to do right now is lead you in this prayer to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. It's a prayer you could do in your own words, but I will give you the steps you need to bring it before the Lord today. The first thing that you want to do right off the top, acknowledge you are a sinner. That is something that we all are. The good news is that God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world. He died and rose again for you and me. He paid the cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin. Repent means to turn from your sin. Not just to say you're sorry and then jump back into your old ways again, but to actually turn from sin, which are those lifestyles, habits, patterns, behaviors, things in your life that go against the word of God. If you humbly go before the Lord, though, and ask him to forgive you, he'll wipe your sin away. And the Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. And I pray you make that decision today. I will have more on this down below. You guys can let me know your thoughts. Don't forget the links to donate to our ministry are there as well. You go to patreon.com slash conservative truth. Sign up for five bucks a month. Help us with our goal for the month of January, trying to get five new patrons. Remember, we have two so far, looking for three more. It is a great blessing if you can help out with that. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk with you soon.